Oh, we have returned! We have returned and OBS, once again, not doing what I asked it to do, but don't worry. I fix it. <sighs> Excuse me. So, where were we? We did our first liberation, right? Hedwin, we sent him back to the Commonwealth. We did our first right with the Fates, which was the Kerr and his adopted human son. We hope Gay and... Was his name Alder? Anyway, we hope they become BFFs. The only thing I do not remember, which we'll find out in a second, is did we... Go ahead and choose who we're fighting next. I don't remember, but we'll find out now because we're going to go continue on your journey. The path to freedom beckons you to press on. And that's what we'll do. So now we gotta take off. Take off? Oh. This is the worst time to just start having a yawn fest. That's not nice. So I apologize if I just randomly become quiet. That's my problem. I don't remember. Oh, down here. Wow, how helpful. I was going to say I don't remember how we get anywhere. What's that? Point of interest. Don't mind if I do. As you soar above the waters of Worm Gulf, you notice Sir Gilman sidle up to you. Sidle? 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 Very slowly. We are very, 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 very high above the waters, if this knight is not mistaken. This knight's brethren lurk beneath the surface there in numbers untold. Fortunately, if we were to come crashing to the surface now, then this knight, why, he would receive a watery burial in the custom of his kind. Thank you, sir. I mean, thank you for sharing your, um, your feelings about it. I hopefully will not allow us to crash. We'll find out. Before I land any- hello? Can you tell me who that is? Oh my gosh, who's that? What is happening? They're coming- they're coming after me! Stop it! Unless they're not, I don't- <laughs> Another point of interest. Below amid the sea- oh god, what? Where did that word come from? Below, amid the desolation of flagging hands, you see Big Bertrude, from which you first embarked by sea. You wonder how its venerable proprietor is faring. I'm certain that Big Bertrude must have left a strong impression on you all. She is not easy to forget. I've known her since before my exile, or hers. She's been here a long time. I've sent my agents to repay her for assisting you, and to send her our regards. The old wagon must have been in need of some repairs. Oh, we're not gonna go visit? Alright. Continue- who are you? It doesn't even- oh, stop, stop. Doesn't even tell me who it is. Oh, I wasn't going- okay. The Forbidden Carnival lies below. Not many exiles see fit to cross beyond it. Some oh, there she goes. Are they coming to be? Does does this? Oh, <laughs> they just pass each other. Some fear that the listless remains of Shack's six shoulders shall snatch them up if they attempt to cross. Others simply do not want to pass through to flagging hands. You know its true significance, as we do, although your adversaries, the withdrawn, should be on their way there now. Soon you shall confront them once again. The withdrawn was... It was the bog. The bog, uh, the bog ladies. We can either go to shunt... Stop. Stop. Stop flying. Shunt. A rocky northern pass towards the ominous Karn of Haub. Gay seems very interested in visiting the mud baths along this route. And Lixend, an arid southern pass towards the ominous Karn of Haub. The Mitha expressed 
and interest in seeing how the wild curs in this vicinity are doing. Ooh. Okay, so we can have ourselves a mud bath? Or we can go look at curs. And if it were me, which it is, we're gonna go look at curs. I agree. Let's go to Licksand. Yeah. Paid. Paid? Page revealed in Jamora Valley. You touch down in the heart of Jamora Valley, where you first, where first you face the fate, and then the dissidents. You briefly wonder where they might be now and how they fare. Well, we saw the fate; they almost crashed into us. You now have a little time before setting, before having to set forth by land. Oh, boy! Let me check in here first, as I as I always do. What's that? Singing sands. The so-called singing is the sound of countless screeching wheel mites. The keepsake from Jermora Valley. I don't hear very many screeching. I don't hear very many sounds from it at all, to be honest. Ah, right where we need to be. Let's look at it. Jermora Valley, in the words of Molten Millith, the Wild Witch. The downside prairie first appears serene. It is not. The soil there accommodates only the region's brutish native vines and overbrush. The most likely food sources prove poisonous. Thus, we journeyed further north. The climate there grew fouler to my senses, though the cure, the, though the cur, Jamura, found it amenable. This sprawling valley, pocked with long evaporated lakes, gives evidence to the monstrosities which roam this land. We found the region's western edge to be more pleasant on the whole. Therein we found sources of fresh water, whereas over to the east, we found the edge of the land's most hideous decay. So true! Let's get out of here. Let's explore Licky Sand. You take some of the afternoon to survey the area with Pometha. You observe many curs off in the distance, driven half wild from the heat. Foolish things. This is what happens when you trust the Commonwealth. There is nothing you can do for the creatures. The sight of them makes you all too eager to return to the wagon and immerse yourself in your vocations. Wow, that was very short lived. <laughs> Almost should have went with the mud bath, to be honest. Tell me your secrets, Pametha. What are, what are your thoughts about the curs? You find Pametha by herself again, though her expression has grown darker than her custom. Leave me be, would you, reader, darling? Trying to get some good and proper moping down, uh, done here, and you are distracting me. Leave me be, reader. Just leave me be, reader. Just leave me be. You don't want to know what's lurking in my heart or mind. What you'll find there isn't pretty. Yet something about her thought process is different to you now. You know that with her conditioning, she can resist your scrutiny. But now her thoughts are laid bare to you. Amitha is alone with her thoughts. See what she's thinking. Would that we all could simply understand each other without a need for words. Leave her be. Amitha knows how to volunteer her thoughts more readily if she has something to share, which is true. We shouldn't just go into her brain. Pamatha's thoughts are her own business. The fleeting connection between you soon is severed. Thoughts are loathsome things, reader. It is difficult to know how best to hide them. Mine are plain enough for you to see by now. She exhales and looks askance. I don't know what that word means. You know by now... I am in this mess with all of you. You could say I lacked Tamitha's sense of commitment. Her zeal. She lives only to see your nation overthrown, or something worse if she could have her way. Centuries of conflict can be quite emboldening that way. Especially when one's sister's leading cause of death is Commonwealth Forged Steel. Wielded with the utmost mercy, of course. Well, I had little patience for the senselessness of it myself. Became a bit of a pariah, I suppose. 
I knew Tamitha was going to get herself and others killed someday, so when she was to fly out on this one big mission of hers, I had other arrangements made. But after she was caught, your people did not exactly hold, uphold their end of the bargain. I knew there were such risks, of course, and yet a chance is still a chance. Tamitha was clipped and cast down. A mercy, they called it. I did not see it that way, and in my growing protests of her treatment, I was soon enough to follow. She falls silent for a while. I haven't yet decided if I entirely regret my decisions. But I do seek Tamitha's forgiveness and wish that she could see my thoughts for what they are, as it seems you can. Then she might realize our nation's people have much more in common than she knows. Sometimes I wonder which of them's the stupider. She brushes past you and out of the wagon for now. Roster bio updated. Pamitha. I do. Oh. She was a Talon ace of the Highwing Remnants who possessed the talents of her sisters, but not their single-minded zeal. She grew weary of the fighting and decided she would put an end to it. Thus, when a critical battle approached, the Commonwealth was waiting and her own blood sister was among the harps captured and clipped. She was more guilt-stricken by this turn than she expected. When she attempted to contact her blood sister in exile, she was told that she could seek her firsthand and was exiled in turn. Conspiracy. She made repeated attempts to make contact with enemy combatants taken into custody. As mercy guides our hands, we will spare your lives but rid ourselves of you from the sentencing ceremony. Amazing. Thank you for that. All right. Forge for resources, we can get a money. Study in private, we can give everybody a little burst of stuff. We'll study in private. You excuse yourself from the others to go pour over the Book of Rites and its mysteries. Through greater understanding comes the reader's influence. Focus on which aspect of the Book of Rites. Ah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll give everyone... Plus one presence, why not? You attune yourself to the strange and mystic properties of the Book of Rites, embracing such as possible that which cannot be explained or truly known. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from the book or from within. You cannot tell. Gain reader's influence. Tenacity! Each rank rises your fellow's exile's presence, increasing the size of their auras. EB. Check in here again for anything new? No. Thank you. Continue. All right. Let's go back downtown to uh, the middle of the day. Another yawn. Oh my god! Look at this creature! A messenger imp. I love him. <sighs> Excuse me. It looks like he has a little beard. What an amazing creature. Here in the dry flats of Jamira Valley, you encounter a messenger imp come to deliver news and rumors from the other side. The news this time pertains to Hedwin, whom you liberated at the fall of Salium. You learn Hedwin returned safely to the Commonwealth, where he was clothed and welcomed, his past transgressions all forgiven. He has to be groomed for a leadership position of his choice, whether on the council or on the blood border. Each equally as lucrative, and secretive as well. Blood border. The northern edge of the Commonwealth is a flat and vulnerable expanse. The high-wing remnants seized upon it at every opportunity 
From the cover of Clouds of Darkness. Yeah, fair, fair, fair. However, he refused, and before the stunned council members could do anything about it, he left them. Good for him. He since had made contact with Wolford's agents and is working together with them. Excuse me. Thus, the ranks of the revolution grow stronger. For the messenger imp custom, the last part of the message was transcribed from Hedwin, word for word, and says, Keep going. I'll see you there. You think the messenger imp for relaying this information? Soon, your companions are all abuzz about it. I always thought Hedwin was looking for someone out there back home. Do you think he found her? He did it. Wonder if he'll find the one he fell for. Yeah. Caesar is happy to hear Hedwin is well back in the Commonwealth. Yeah, that's how it's done, Hedwin. Right behind you, chum. A glorious example. Hedwin sets for all of us. The news of Hedwin's liberation fills you and your fellow exiles with newfound resolve. Your companions gained plus one hope for the next rite. Wish Hedwin luck. The Karn of Hayub, the scribe's deeds. You're gonna hate to hear what I'm about to tell you, Ron. Aw, oh, hey, it's you guys. Just as I was thinking, hey, I haven't seen those guys in a little while, and I wonder how they're doing, and if they maybe need to purchase anything. They don't. Ooh. Burning Promise. After dousing the adversary's pyre, the bearer earns a reward up to three times plus five. Hmm. And it's only 20. Perhaps I will take this. Confirm. Goitaish indeed, thank you. Appreciate you doing business, and you guys be sure to tell your friends, okay? Give me the book. Oh, oh. Well, I'll look at that in a minute. I have a yawn to yawn. And I live by that. The scribe's deeds in the words of Golgothenian, the Master General. I wish to be remembered not for boastfulness, thus I refrain from detailing our exploits across the land, save to say that they were numerous. Know that only through our combined strength of arms and wit did we withstand the savage land, such were the monstrous dangers that it posed. I came to see that all the terrors which I heard at bedside in my youth were based entirely in fact. So great that they were, they blotted out the sky. Such was the evil that we vanquished, that the remnants of it yet shine under the stars, and in the end, it was the stars which guided us towards our truest calling. Truest? Truest calling. The Karn of Haub. In the words of Lou Scalorian, Hundred Minds, the Scholar. Another yawn. I'm so sorry, I don't know what's happening. How ironic that the shattered remnants of the blown... Bone? Titan Shaq's six shoulders, which once stood vigilant over the archway into flogging hands, remain now as forbidding as when that horrid monster still possessed unnatural life. After little Haub dispatched the Bone Titan in a feat of ingenuity, Shax's six pieces... Shax's pieces fell into the valley floor, forming a set of standing stones, which Haub marked. Further traces of the Titan's glacial blood coagulated into perfect frozen drops which still shimmer in the darkness. Six shoulders seems to start reanimating when the stars above him dance a certain way. Paint the sigil then, in the shining light. He starts to fucking groove like no one's business when the stars are out. Oh, hello? The lone minstrel's white flute affords you glimpses of your journey through the downside, through the music it contains. Did I click on it? I didn't even see that I did. I... okay. 
you can have that while I look at this. Oh my god. Okay, sorry. Silent the bones. Without we all could become musical instruments, ere our bones turn to dust. Keepsake from Jinomura Valley. And so true. We're missing some. Da 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 da. Say, sad. You hate to hear it, but it is what it is. And unfortunate for me, I have to commence the right and hope for the best. Though the now familiar surroundings of the Karn of Hau made preparations faster than before, the stars are already aflame by the time you and the others are gathered. The ride against the withdrawn is commencing soon. Please be ready, madam. Shouldn't be a problem. Always good to stretch my wings a bit, besides. You wish them all good fortune in turn. Little else is said, and together, you watch the celestial harmony in calm and silence. And await the withdrawn. What if they just don't show up? Do we have a moment where that happens? That would be so weird. Look forth! I am! Exiles of the night wings! That's us! You are returned once more unto the cairn of Ha'u. Always forget it's cairn. The triumvirate you stand against shall be... These nuts! Withdrawn. Oh. Reduce their fire to a smolder and step closer to freedom. Now, prepare yourselves. Prepare ourselves to... Okay, I was like, they didn't even say hello anything or nothing. Precious time. You defeated us a previous time. <laughs> defeated. This time, all for your luck. No matter the result, and no matter the cost. Your adversaries are prepared, reader. Who shall conduct the rites on your behalf? Frozen soul, negative ten to the adversary. The right shall begin forthwith. Roster bio updated. Mill day. I don't even think I can check that right now. Ugh, excuse me. Oh, we can. Don't mind if I do. I don't know what bit was new because I didn't even know I could come in here. I like that the motive was madness. Most bug crones kept to themselves until, but an. Ed Milde was always brazen in her disregard for commonwealth doctrine and values. Though her studies of flammable reagents, Ed Milde grew obsessed with the legends of the eight scribes, especially Aslak, who she believed lay dormant, and would one day be reborn with newfound hunger, which could only be sated by devouring the world. Oh, same, you know? When commonwealth officials showed up to take her in for spreading unrest, she was all too eager to comply. I don't know what's happening. All these yawns. All those hamburgers. All right. Can I get out of here? Thank you. What do you have? Fire has less than the adversaries. She deals an additional five. Or a blast arcs at a wide angle, banishing adversaries in a larger area. Quickness is still doo doo 11. Glory, though, is 25. Presence is 19. Part of me, I mean, to be honest, just wants to continue being fast and furious. At the start of the right, the adversary's pyre automatically suffers damage of negative 20. Well, you're nasty. When flinging the orb into the adversary's pyre, the bearer deals an additional damage plus 4. Same. Okay. This one's gonna be painful, I think. Hmm. Why is he so fucking fast? Electric. Do you have anything? You don't. 
Let's have a little look. These feel the same. Once per rate, a uh, once per rate. So if the bear's pyre is extinguished, it's instead restored by plus five. After dousing the adversary's pyre, the bearer's pyre is restored up to five. But it has to be through Gilman, I believe. Uh, after bear banishes an adversary, well, no, I don't care about that. After being banished by an adversary, the bear has a chance to return immediately. Plus two hope. What was hope for again? Duration. Plus two quickness. Can make him even faster. You know what? I mean, part of me wants to say, let's have a little looky. Let's, you know, look into that. What about presence? Affects the aura size. The aura size is garbage. Okay. So I would propose Gilman, Gay, and Jadariel. I feel like perhaps I would regret this. Perhaps, perhaps I will regret. Let me have another 17 yawns and a sip of water. So, Gilman first. Sir Gilman. Sir Gilman. Uh, gay! Gay. <laughs> it's always funny to me and it'll never not be funny. And then we'll do Jadaria. What do you have again? Further and faster. Yup. Jodaria. It is done. Prepared as ever. Hear us, yes, luck. Bring to us thy terrible power. I don't want you to have that, please. Now begin. Wee! The night wings thus assert themselves. <laughs> the orb. Ooh! Didn't have a time to jump. I jumped into it now. Quite the turn of events. Okay, <laughs> did it. The night wind shall prevail at this rate. Oh my god, I'm too fucking fast. <gasps> oh, I couldn't fucking jump. Oh, simply abhorrent. Throw it in. Yeah, he threw it in. He's like basketball. Oh. So it is. <gasps> Even now, the ashes of our pyre mingle with his lifeblood. Prevail or no, ye shall not interfere with his return. Which is fine. I just don't want you to be there for it. <laughs> Why did I run into that? Tough luck, Nightwings. <laughs> Why am I running into it? You are powerless for now. Such a display. Oh my god. So true though. Your pyre shall soon be ashes on the ground. Can I help you? Why weren't you jumping? Oh my Agents god. Reader. Shame. It really is. I have won. The orb. With 
grace. No more than a lick of flame remains. No! The withdrawn prevail. I don't want them to. They somehow managed to scrape by despite their adversary's efforts. Ah, oh, so important. <laughs> Doo doo. <The> is done. <laughs> you slug. No, get the fuck bitch out of here. You slug grew stronger, stronger. Now to darkness we return. This night is. Mortified. The scribes, they test our fate? They test our faith? They test our faith. There is much Bitch, to I'm sorry. This experience. And it's all bad. Desperate for honor. This Huzzah! Great wisdom clouds over his, this knight's entire consciousness. Oops. I'm kicking stuff. Alright, let's have a look. Oh my god. I wish you had that before. Until the next right. Damn, bestie, we did bad. We did bad! Ugh! We did bad. I'm sorry, guys. That's doo-doo. Back at the wagon, after falling to the withdrawn just barely, you were able to recover for a time, though you have another task this night. Time again to seek out where the rites shall take you next by searching for the answer in the waning starlight. The stars yet shine for you, revealing various paths forward. You gaze into the darkness of night and seek now your destination. Mm hmm. Triesta. Lou. Melith. That's where we are. Do, 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 do. We can fight that guy. Mm hmm. We can fight the Bowows. Ooh, but we need to knock them down too, because they're also doo doo. I would probably say we just fight the essence as much as I hate it in hopes of knocking them down. It looks like the Timbers haven't done anything, though. Yeah, let me smack him down. The anime cherry blossoms. So, we are to have another brush with Timetha. Perhaps she'll spare me yet another moment of her time. She's here because of me, and I am for her. Tamitha tells you more of your next adversary, her own blood sister. I forgot! Oh. Ma'am, I'm so sorry I didn't speak to you when I had the chance. We'll, we'll speak to our, our queen after. Tamitha Thane, a harp of the high wing remnants, raised from birth to exile and outwing and outmaneuvering her enemies. She seems driven by her hatred for the Commonwealth. After retreating to the mountains centuries ago, the Harps refused to join the Commonwealth, and those old tensions boiled over into raids or skirmishes or all-out war. Flight tacticians such as Tamitha gave the Highwing remnants a swift and powerful military presence to this day, despite the Harps' small numbers. She once hatched ambitious plans to overthrow the Commonwealth, breaching its defenses so her sisters could rain down untold destruction. On the darkest night of the year, she led a daring infiltration mission deep into her enemy's lands. It almost worked. However, she was betrayed by someone very close to her, 
Someone branded a Commonwealth sympathizer. Tamitha. Tamitha was caught, clipped, and subsequently exiled as a prisoner of war. But being trapped within the downside only stoked her fury. I wound up in here not too long afterwards. Anyway, it's complicated. What happened between us? What I did, I did for her own good and that of all of our sisters. Though I'm beginning to doubt that Tamitha will ever see it that way. We'll see, I suppose, but for now, I'd best try and catch what sleep I'm able. Pleasant dreams then, darling. You bid a good night to Pamitha in turn. No time now to make flight preparations, though come morning, the Black Wabigan will press onward. Ugh. Hmm. I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about my queen. Sorry, Sandra. <laughs> I missed you. You bring me brief reprieve from solitude. What seek you in exchange? Oh no! There's nothing to talk about. Ma'am! Why won't she speak to me? You approach Jadariel, who seems to be busy explaining something to Sir Gilman. And so, fainting left against them proves to be reliable. They all lead with their right wings when they choose to strike. They are quick, but can leave themselves quite vulnerable. Such sage counsel, madam. This knight feels most emboldened should he ever again be forced to confront the high wing remnants in single combat. Pray you never shall. Being here, I suppose it is unlikely. She notices you then. Reader. The good knight and I were just comparing survival strategies we picked up on the blood border. Reminiscing on old times, it could be called. Umaros. Indeed. The good Jadariel has volunteered to become this knight's master at arms, should we ever achieve our liberty together. And this knight humbly accepted. Oh. What? I said no such thing. I owe you nothing, worm. Oh, ah, but the finest lessons are the harshest made, madam. This knight is overjoyed that you would thusly train him as your protege. Reader. Spare me. Please. You somehow managed to steer the subject back to military tactics. This knight is most impressed with your familiarity with the finer points of being sliced to ribbons by the High Wing Remnants Master Reader. Sir Gilman and Jadariel continue the conversation for some time. You, since they are in relatively good spirits, all things considered, Goodbye. We must take its flight. Just having a look around in case we missed anything. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Ooh. Oops. Stop, stop. Someone is just chilling over here. Someone is chilling over here, and this dude is just flying around. If I fly into them, I'm gonna do it. It literally doesn't do anything. Okay. Interesting. The hidden glade of Lou is nigh impossible to find on foot, though there it lies below us. Protected even now by the enchantment of Lou Scalorian Hundred Mines. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand the river named for him is... I understand the river named for him is rather famous in your commonwealth. 
The mouth of that river Scalorian opens wide, not very far from here. It was there that limbless Arizek was defeated, turning the region lush and livable, at least for certain denizens, although, of course, not everyone believes this. The Root Titan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your adversaries, the Essence, must be working to find their way there even now. Good fortune in your right against them, reader. I'll worry about that in a minute. I'm just gonna check the other corner. Alright. Needlefield, a small clearing east of the Glade of Blue. Gay senses the presence of the eight scribes along this route. A hush clearing south of the Glade of Blue. Tizo seems enthusiastic about the prospect of taking this route. I'm gonna go with Gay. Oh, sorry, land. Your wagon touches down in Black Basin, where you first met Vulfrid and Pamatha as well. You briefly wonder at what might have happened had your paths not crossed as you consider what to do with the remains of the afternoon. Walk the Eight Scribes' Path. Escort Gay as she searches the vicinity for hidden traces of the Eight Scribes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll do that in a minute. I've got some new stuff. Magma Mug provides a bit of warmth on cold nights and something at which to nod and stare. A keepsake from the Black Basin. Ooh! I see, very nice. Was it just one page? Yes, one page on the Black Basin. In the words of Molten Millith, the Wild Witch. The continent we call Black Basin shall one day tear itself apart. Arriving upon blackened molten crags, tolerable only by the Harp Triesta, we pressed onwards towards a suffocating wood. This land felt to us somehow primordial. Deep in its roots and noxious crevices lay innumerable clues as to its ancient history. But we had little time to excavate for our supplies by then, were then. Further, we were lost. Our attempt our best attempts at circumnavigation had all had failed. It was Luz Galorian who reached out at last unto the stars, and they revealed the way. Then, we at last could see the sacred Mount Elodial, there in the distance. Thank you. Can I speak to you? <laughs> uh, speak to me, Sandra, please. <laughs> Walk the eight scratch path. You and Gay wander together for a while through the leaves and branches of Needlefield. Sometimes in circles. What exactly she is looking for, she cannot explain. A small clearing east of the Glade of Lou, the needles strewn about here are sharp to the touch all year round. Yay! Eventually, however, she happens on something that never caught your notice. Look at this! Look at this, reader! The scribes, they walked this very path. I think they did, and, and left this here. For us. The object she procures does not s does seem to emanate some sort of faint and ancient power. You have received wisdom trace. You sense something from it. Grants an exile plus a thousand enlightenment. Drag to a talisman pocket to activate. Usable once. Those sensitive to the presence of the eight scribes may see traces of them here and there. Very nice. Oh! Huh? Hold on. Will she speak to me now? God dang it. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. She seems to have something on her mind. I breathed weird now. <coughs> Cough is stuck. Gay seems to be talking to the Black Wagon's walls again, though this time something seems to have come over her. Little brother, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? You are unsure whether to check in with her or leave her be. Gay is acting rather odd, even for her. Wait and listen? Gay would not be here if she lacked the capacity to work through her problems. 
get her attention. Your concern for her is such that you had best check in to make sure she's all right. Um, this is hard to say. I feel like Gay came here to talk to the wagon, so I think she wants to work out her problems with, or with or to the wagon. So we'll wait and listen. You sense now is not the time to interrupt, and that Gay is on the verge of confronting some long dormant emotions which she ought to face. They always said there was something wrong with me, but they wouldn't really tell me what. They wouldn't say, they just... They said it was moon-touched, but so what? Moon-touched, those deem impaired by commonwealth standards or very different in negative sense. Ew. So then, the scribes... They called me here. They are the ones who brought me here, not those... those people. They were so cruel. They always were so cruel. I didn't have a little brother at the time, no one that I recall, really. Although so much of it back then, I can't really tell how much of it I dreamt. Most of it, I didn't want it to be true. But I remember that they threw me out. They decided they would throw me out and let the scribes take care of me, they said. The scribes... They would take care of me. It was so very quiet here, and I was all alone again, although... I think I liked it more? Being alone down here, rather than being alone back there. Everybody's alone down here, and so it makes me feel less alone somehow? Back there, why, I would sometimes see families, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, but here, there was hardly anyone at all. But I knew that I was closer to the scribes. I knew that they were in the sky above, and I did search for them up there, you know? And then one night, I found them. I saw the stars, and they were falling to the ground, and I thought, why is it the scribes themselves are crying? Are they sad? And maybe are they sad for me? Well, that was when I first saw you, little brother. With your help, I would get closer to the scribes. That way, maybe they could answer all my questions, don't you think? But I'm so very glad I found you and the others. I'm finally not alone. I'm finally not alone in... More importantly, I think sometimes I even feel that way, that I'm not alone. Maybe as we get closer, maybe I will get to feel that way more often, being here or being anywhere with you and all my friends. She falls silent. Though you were concerned for her at first, you sense that now she is at peace. She wanders off, paying you no notice in the least. You sense you have a better understanding of her now. Oh, updated. Gay. She was a special child, left abandoned, and despite her seemingly simple nature, she possessed a strange affinity for the old ways. One day, she was taken in by the authorities, and when she revealed her fixations about the scribes, she was deemed witless. And when no one claimed responsibility for her, she was cast into exile. And the downside, she has wandered aimlessly in search of more clues about legendary heroes who so fascinate her. We also don't know how old she is, just that she's been out and about for two years. Alrighty, righty. With that, I mean, we have like 10 minutes left, but I don't see the point in continuing forward because we're going to be going into battle and we need the seller's strongest potions. And that's going to take a little bit more than 10 minutes. So we will just go ahead and we'll end this one here. But until then, I will see you guys later. Thank you everyone who joined. And I hope you have a good day. <laughs> Goodbye.